Maybe he thought you'd forget. Former House Speaker John Boehner, who went back and forth in the Obama era, big part of the obstruction, a big part of the partisanship. Well, now he's got a problem with where the Republican Party is, but he's ignoring his role in creating it. And some places are remembering and torching him. Boehner was at it today. I don't really beat up too many people in this book, except one, Ted Cruz, Lucifer in the flesh. It's a soundbite. It's one he's used before as he slams these right wing figures. But Boehner went along for the ride. You have to remember, this was years long before Trump. He was the House Speaker. So he was the leader of the party and he engaged with the extreme elements. At times, he didn't like some of the Freedom Caucus and the pushback there, but he found ways to unite and lever with them when he wasn't putting out any coups that might replace his job. He was on the front lines all the way back to the Clinton impeachment. In the book, he now says he was wrong about that, too. But what did he do when he had power? We all remember. I think uh, there's a, uh, a point here where the American people are wondering, uh, is the president above the law? The president uh, could have put this whole issue uh, behind us, not put the country and the world through this misery, if he'd have just told us the truth in January. Hmm. John Boehner wants politicians to tell the truth, but that was him as conference chair trying to become speaker, using his power to go along with whatever the far right in his party wanted. An impeachment that whatever some of the possible valid issues, he now says he regrets that he didn't fight against the Republican impeachment of Clinton. Later, Boehner was in for the Tea Party on stage at rallies going hard against Obamacare. This bill is the greatest threat to freedom that I have seen in the 19 years I've been here in Washington. Join us in defending our freedom. And join us in defeating Pelosi Care. Are we supposed to take people literally, John Boehner today or then? Because the idea that providing subsidies to the private marketplace for health care coverage is the greatest threat to freedom in his life in the modern era, it's risible. Now, John Boehner, as he tries to sell books and go into this part of his career, calls it, quote, crazy town and the chaos caucus when he refers to the Tea Party, the energy that he was tapping in that backlash to Obamacare. He also was part of the Republican shutdown over that law. He went along with demands that started from people like Ted, quote, Lucifer Cruz. Boehner now says that was another mistake. Even though I didn't really want to go the direction where the team's going, they were the ones who elected me to be the leader, and I had an obligation to go lead them. So that means I had to go jump out in front of them, even if I thought what, what they were trying to do uh, really made not a whole lot of sense. We're joined by Mother Jones, Washington Bureau Chief David Korn. He's writing about Boehner's legacy and has plenty to say about it. Uh, welcome to the beat, sir. Good to be with you, Ari. Uh, I can just is start. <laughs> John Boehner, uh, well, I want to ask you, is John Boehner uh, credible and consistent in his concerns about the partisan and rightward drift of the Republican Party? Well, not at all. I mean, as, as you point out, and you could even go further, you know, he basically said, OK, to the let's just start with the Tea Party, the Tea Party extremism that hit in 2009 at the rally that you showed him saying this was the greatest threat to freedom, the the Obamacare bill, which has not been the greatest threat to freedom. But anyway, that same rally, there were people there who were yelling Nazis, Nazis in response to what he and other Republicans were saying. They were accusing Obama and other Democrats of being Nazis. This is in 2009. A few months later, at another rally on Capitol Hill, the Tea Party types who were protesting the health care bill, they were spitting at John Lewis and other black members of Congress, and they shouted the N-word at him, and they shouted homophobic slurs at Barney Frank. You know, the Tea Party, according to one poll, 30% of it believed the racist birth or conspiracy theory about Obama, and there were members of, of Boehner's own caucus who was who were pressing that. He never told them to shut up and get out. Uh, when it came to Benghazi, he was the one who let them have 27,000, I think it was maybe only 23, hearings and pushed all sorts of conspiracy theories. So all the extremism that fed into Trumpism and the January 6th insurrection were, was already bubbling to the fore 
with the Tea Party and back in the Obama years. And Boehner didn't say one word about it because he very crassly, very cynically, particularly if you read what he says now, tried to exploit the Tea Party and those sentiments, those extremist and, and violent sentiments, to win a majority in the House. And it worked. And he, you know, he, the tiger came in. He tried to ride the tiger. He ended up having to leave to become a lobbyist. But nevertheless, when he had the chance, he never said that any of this was wrong. So plenty of politicians have their spin and exaggerations and changes of heart over time. Uh, but there seems to be a, a, a particularly strong trend here of Republicans dealing with where the party is headed, and by many measurements, it's obviously more extreme, um, who then come out and just claim they were never for it. What do you make of that? What does that tell us about the leadership? I mean, Speaker of the House is in the line of the presidency. It's one of the most important jobs. What does it tell you hmm. that someone at that high level of the Republican Party, when freed, quote unquote, comes out with all this? Well, it shows that he's a bit of a coward and not much of a leader. And, you know, you and I don't run for public office. I don't know what it takes to put someone in that position. But I've often wondered, why do you do this if you can't fight for what you believe in? I mean, what you know, it's a hard job. I mean, my, my hat's off to members sure. of Congress, senators. It's a hard job. It's not an easy life. Now, they get paid rel relatively well. They have lots of perks and respect, and they get to come on shows like this and say what they think. But what's the point of doing that if you can't say what you really think, if you can't really work to put your ideas and principles into um, power, into policy? And um, they all claim that's what they're there for. But Boehner and others have shown that when push comes to shove, they're really just there for the power. And he was getting kicked around. I mean, he had the power, but it was not a very pleasant existence. He ran away screaming. So he got kind of the punishment he deserved. Yeah. But he doesn't deserve now to be seen as a wise old statesman who, you know, who we can sort of look at and say, oh, yeah, John Boehner, thank you for speaking out against the authoritarian drift in the Republican Party and the fact that it's taken over by it's been taken over by what you call whack jobs when you were present at creation for all this. So really at least acknowledge that and say you made a mistake and that you were wrong about that and that maybe you should have stood up and said something sooner maybe you should have led the fight against the racist birth through conspiracy theory which put donald trump into play as republic as, as a republican leader right as you say and again there's room for constructive intellectual growth and otherwise um yeah. but but what he's doing now seems to be such ridiculous revisionism uh, in order to ingratiate himself into whatever he, I guess, thinks. Now, the only thing it tells you is he thinks that the polite society outside of the House Republican caucus, um, because he's still hanging out with moderates and Republican circles and business people. It's, it's not as if he's only in Berkeley, where, where I, I suspect someone like you might be so at home. Just kidding, David. Uh, you could be at home anywhere. Uh, but, you know, he's not out on some left coast diatribe. He's still in a moderate to center, you know, center right uh, place in his life. But he still feels the need to say, I'm not with them. I'm supposed to fit in a break, uh, but I'll let you have a quick repost since I mentioned Berkeley. Uh, as, as I said, it's a lovely city. But I think the key thing here is that we know that people in even serving now in, in the House and the, uh, on the, the Republican side in the House and the Senate, they often tell people that they can't stand what's happening to their party. You know, the party itself, the people in the party yeah, can't we stand that the Donald Trump for president. And, this, and they're, they're scared, too, about the wackos in the party. And just very few of them seem to have the courage to talk about it or say anything when it matters, when it means putting something on the line. Exactly. And that's bad for the party. Exactly. And it's bad I, I, I for got, all of them. I got to go. But yeah the, yeah, the the proof of them being afraid is how often they talk to journalists ourselves included off the record about oh this is bad uh and you rarely see it out in the light of day david thank you as always hey i'm ari melber from msnbc you can see more of our videos right here or better yet subscribe to our youtube channel below you could have been anywhere in the world but you're here with us and we appreciate that